Ready? Yeah, I think so. Oh, come on. Energy. (laughs) Energy, Dave. (laughs) Have you done your Joe Wicks workout? Is that what this is all about? My what? (laughs) Joe Wicks workout. You know, he does a workout every morning, doesn't he? Oh, okay. If you don't know who Joe Joe Wicks Wicks. is, it doesn't matter. Front page news, mate. He's some chef, celebrity chefs come workout guru who's been doing morning workouts on YouTube every day for people during the lockdown. Do I look like someone who reads the news? No, but he's like on Good Morning TV. I don't know. He's on TV. Well, good for him. I can imagine you doing that in your in your house. What? Working out? <laughs> yeah, doing like a, a work-along workout. I could do the cuckoo kangaroo workout, maybe. <laughs> oh, bless Right, him. let's go. This week on Whiskey and Things, we talk to our very good friend, singer, songwriter, TV star, whatever you want to call him. He does it all. Robbie Coles. Robbie. Robbie Coles. And we enjoy the Talisca 10-year single malt and hear the educational words from our very own essential worker, the Whiskey God. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. We're on Twitter and Facebook at Whiskey and Things, and we're on Instagram at Whiskey and Things Podcast. And you can rate, review, and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform throughout the universe. The whole universe. You're listening to the Whiskey and Things Podcast with Dave Giles and Nick Kent. Good evening, Nicholas. Good evening, morning or afternoon. We're back to our regular recording time, which is evening, much more appropriate whiskey drinking time. Welcome to Whiskey and Things, episode 11. Welcome. You are Dave Giles and I am... I am. One of many Nick Kent's. Nicholas Clark of Kent. One of many, mate. <laughs> oh, talking about that, weirdly, there's a lot of Dave Giles's. There's now a Dave Giles the second on Spotify. Okay. Uh, who's like this hip hop artist. And I wonder, because... Is this something you want to tell us? No, but I, wa- I actually wonder whether his dad's called Dave Giles or All actually right. he's gone Dave Giles the second because his name's Dave Giles and I already got 60 odd songs up. So he was like, well, it's easy just to be just do number, Dave Giles number two. two. Oh, yeah, amazing. Oh, anyway, I'll tell you what. There's a yeah. there's a famous Nick Kent I always get mixed up with. Everyone's tagging me on stuff. You probably have as well. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it before. The yeah. enemy music writer guy from the seventies, right? Yeah, I've seen books of his in shops and sent you photos. Yes, that's the one. But check this out, right? Once Eric Melvin, the guitarist from No Effects, right? I was on tour with him, and he gave me a little call out from the stage. He was like, "Nick Kent, the best dressed man in town." And I was like. Sweet. Oh, that's nice. For 13 years, I thought he was paying me a compliment. I was like, oh, that's not oh, best dressed man in town. Turns out it's a lyric from a song, right? <laughs> from an- About Nick Kent, the journalist. Yes. It's in a song called Press Darlings by Adam and the Ants. Get out of town. They didn't get on very well. I, for like 13 years, I thought, oh, Eric paid me a compliment. That's nice. But then like this year, a friend of mine sent me a Spotify link with this song on it. And the lyrics are... And if evil be the food of genius, there aren't many demons around. And if passion is in fashion, Nick Kent is the best dressed man in town. (laughs) What the hell? That's amazing. So, uh, yeah, that's nice. I finally got the joke after 13 years. There we go. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. There's also a Dave Giles running for Congress at the moment. He's a Trump fan. So I get a lot of tweets about that, which is fun. Oh, nice. Um, Should we get on with episode anyway, 11? Uh, so as always, let's just uh, have a little look back at last week. Last week's show has gone down very well, Nick. Has it? Good. It a lot great of people show. were very, very impressed with Jay Bradley, our guest last week, whiskey expert. Very informative uh, guy. From the Craft Whiskey Boys and from the Whiskey and Wealth Club. We've had a lot of comments about this. A lot of people were completely unaware that, similar to us, uh, that investing in whiskey casks was a thing. Yeah. Uh, and it certainly has been interesting. We we have put up a couple of extra videos, which didn't make the final cut of the podcast last week because he had so much interesting stuff to say. So I hope people have enjoyed them as well. If not, have a look on our Facebook and our YouTube pages. But I think it's best summed up by Darren Lindsay, uh, who's one of our patrons, who just said this quite simply, awesome episode, which is all down to you, Nick. Well done. Uh, 
really interesting interview about buying whiskey casks for investment purposes and then whatever the hand that what would you call that hand nick a-ok hand is that a-ok hand it's the <laughs> this is not podcast gold right now you know when oh, you put your one, this one right here this one i'm showing you dave this this hand but right what here. hand what do you call that it's not like because you got your thumbs up hand and you got your it's the a-ok the bird, but what do you call that it's the a sign the of approval okay hand yeah it's a sign of, sign approval. of approval so yeah Re- really interesting interview <laughs> about buying whiskey casks for investment purposes. A OK hand. A OK. So uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, thanks Darren for that comment. I, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's exactly what that was. Um, <laughs> does exactly what it says on the tin. So thanks Jay for coming in, coming in. Well, joining us on on Zoom. And thanks to everyone who has listened to that podcast and has commented and sent us little messages about it. Very kind of you. Yeah, glad you enjoyed. Shall we move on to this week's whiskey? Yeah, let's just get on with it. It's a cracker. Whiskey bots roll out. Oh, that she wants is another baby. She's gone tomorrow. Oh, that she wants is another baby. Hey. Yeah. No idea why that just popped into my head. <laughs> Ace of bass. Yeah. Ace of <laughs> bass. 90s classic. <laughs> why did that just pop in my head? I don't know. Did Nick Kent, the journalist, do a <laughs> <laughs> don't know. do a review of it? Oh dear! And uh, channeling your your enemy journalist credentials. Mm. This week's whiskey. Oh. Whiskey <laughs> ruined your soundbite. Ruined your ruined soundbite. Ruined my catchphrase. Brilliant. Cheers. Thanks. It's very a much. humdinger. Right, we're heading north, 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 north to the Isle of Skye. Isle of Sky. Yeah, right up there on the left bit. What's that called? West. We are uh, <laughs> sampling the Talisker 10 year old single malt whiskey this week. We've had a lot of people ask about when we were going to do this one. It's quite a popular one, I believe. It is a popular one. I think I've had it before, but I can't remember having it before. It's one of those ones. We must have. Did we do it on the. Did we do it? I don't think we did do it on the. I've had it. Did we do it on the show? I've definitely had it. I know I've had it. Say that a bit higher. I might might be an answer. All right, okay. Uh, did we have it before? I don't think we did, Dave, but we both had it. <laughs> <laughs> don't know yeah. if I can get much higher than that. Yeah, so I, I've no idea what to expect, even though I know I've, I know I've had it. No, I must have had it. Yeah, we've only got our little taster ones, because um, yep. I nearly bought one. This, I nearly bought the bottle this week, right? Did you? Yeah, but I had a certain budget to buy some whiskey this week. Oh, and, yeah. and it was 44 quid for a bottle. And that's a bit of a treat for me, 44 quid. Um, At the moment, for sure. Yeah, but for like 50 quid, I managed to get these two. So they're on offer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you got... I got a Laphroaig 10 and a Glenlivet Founders Reserve for like oh, 50 quid. Founders Reserve. So, you know, that's what I went for in the end. But um, apparently it says on the box that it's the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. It's not strictly true. Oh, yeah. Um yeah, there's two, but the other one, Torabhaeg, I think it is, it's kind of an old distillery, but they've only really come, they rebuilt it and they've only started production again in 2017. So they're currently aging the stuff they've been making. So there is two. So this is the only one actually producing whiskey you can actually drink at the moment, the Talisker. Right. Okay. So technically fair. Yeah. Did you know, Nick, that the name Talisker comes from the old Norse for sloping rock? I did not. There you go. Wow. Uh, and apparently, uh, Talika, mm, mm, and apparently, Meta- Metaliska. I'm doing this. I, I'm, I, this Ooh, is something I, Metaliska. I, I, I used the, I used the power of uh, Metallica, Metaliska. Mm. Why have they not done a Metallica version of Metaliska? Oh, they've made their own whiskey called Blackened. That's why. But they should have called it Metal. Anyway, what a wasted <laughs> opportunity that was. Metaliska is a great name for Metallica. a whiskey. Metaliska. Metaliska. Yeah. Yeah, Lars is, they're all rich enough already. Anyway, so uh, before I even put my nose in this glass, I've been told that Talisker's smell and taste instantly connect the drinker with its rugged coastal heritage, described as a wild spirit by the sea versus wild spirits everywhere. Now, I can't remember where that... You're a wild spirit. I can't remember where I got that from. I just typed in fun facts about Talisker, and that came up uh, on the old Google machine. So, um... <laughs> So let's, let's get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my nose in it and see if it t- smells like rugged coastal heritage 
Ooh. and a wild spirit by the sea. You get that nose in there. <laughs> well, there's a subtle peat smoke. Can you get that heritage in there? It's, it's definitely peaty. My mum told us off this week about all us our <laughs> nose in smells. Did you see that comment on Facebook? I saw Carol's comment, yes. Yeah. I took Just it very drink it seriously. already. <laughs> Just drink it already. She's got a point, Dave. Anyway, I'm going to have some. She does this have is, a point. This one's for you, Carol. It does smell a little bit salty. You're getting the, salt, the, sea, the sea salt air, I guess. Mm. I've always had trouble with the smelling salt bit. I'm not going to lie. There is a sea air in there. I can, I can, uh, uh, Sierra Nevada. No, uh, sea air. There's definitely a sea air in yeah. the smell. What I love about this, because it's by the sea, that's kind of there. I'm not going to lie. I'm a sucker for good marketing, right? Yeah. And they've got other whiskeys called Storm and Dark Storm and all this kind of stuff. And they have pictures of the waves. And, you know, it does kind of bring up images of being in a cozy cabin on a rainy, you know, rainy winter night, drinking this. Log fire. Log fire. Bit of cheese. It does have a, you know, it has a, that. You go into a pub, it's got a log fire going on. An old fashioned country pub. It smells like this. Yeah. It's a cozy smell. Yeah, it is. Tasting note, cozy. Cozy. <laughs> but um, I'm getting like an antiseptic cough sweet vibe as well on the on the palate or finish. Like a kind of, um, like a locket. Other cough sweets are available. No, I'm not getting that. I- I'm getting a tune, not a locket. It's very weird. You've got to really leave it there. Nope, not getting nope. that one. But that's your experience, and that's the beautiful thing about this. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna Everyone's get my tongue on it. Get that in there. Wow. Oh, that was beautiful on the tongue. It is lovely, isn't it? Very smoky. Mm. God, that just literally exploded on my tongue in a really pleasant way. You know, after last week with Jay, Jay Bradley, are you now thinking about the angle of your head as you as you take a sip? Because I've no idea what the I wasn't. You should have been. I wasn't, but I am now. Anyway. Yeah. This is a uh, forty five point eight. Okay, so another very, strong one. Which is very accurate, I've got to say. <laughs> That's really complex. It's really complex. Um, very smoky. Loads of flavour in that. Loads of flavour. I can understand why people wouldn't like that in terms of it's not, it's not. I don't think it's a beginner's whiskey by any stretch. No, no, no. What I'm getting though is it's, it's very strong. There's loads going on, but it's not like an alcohol kick for me. It's no. all flavour. Yes. All flavour. That's... That's what I meant when I said it explodes on the tongue. That's mm. exactly what that's exactly what I meant. It's not like I didn't feel like I was drinking a forty five point eight percent whiskey. Put it that way. It didn't make no. me go. Oh, that's beautiful. Did you know, Nick, that in two thousand nine, Katie Tunstall was given a handmade guitar made from cask staves from her favourite distillery, which was Talisker. Wow. Could you imagine that having a guitar made from old whiskey barrel? I'd be sucking the whiskey out of that on stage if I had that. This is why I need a hit single. <laughs> I need a hit single, so a well, distillery will make me a guitar. Well, you started trying. <laughs> you know. Lovely. Lovely. Now, um, Nick, every <laughs> single week we ask for, for people to send in their tasting notes, if they have any, on next week's whiskey. Now, we've had a very, something very special happen this week. Not only has someone sent in some tasting notes, they've done a whole video. A 15-minute video reviewing mm. their whole Talisker experience. This is Nick Barnes, who gave us the recipe for the Jameson's pancakes last week. And he's done this whole 15-minute video of his experience of Talisker, going way back to when he first visited the distillery. It's an absolute delight. Uh, we will post links in the in our blah, 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 and we'll share the video on, on our social medias. Um, but here's a little clip of what Nick has to say about Talisker. Hey there, Nick Barnes here. Talisker is definitely one of my favourite whiskies. I think it's nearly perfect whiskey. It's quite challenging. You don't want to start your friends on it if they're not Scotch drinkers. It has a lot of strong, com- complex flavours. I've been drinking this whiskey for so long, like 30 years now, maybe like 31, 32. It's an old friend. Um, as I say, I don't drink a lot of it. I don't drink it very often, but it's it's always very special to come back to. It's, it's quite salty. It has quite, a, for me, quite a sweet finish. Talisker is a special occasion drink. If you've got like if several of your mates who enjoy whiskey, just before you send them on their way, spend like 20 minutes enjoying a nice glass of Talisker in, in a Dave Giles glass. There's so much pleasure to a familiar, a good familiar whiskey. It's uh, smashed, 
smashing. Boom. I tell you what, if you ever want to like swap out a Nick for a week and I can go have a, uh, <laughs> feel free. I can go have a holiday. Be great. <laughs> Just get a different Nick in. So it'll still be Dave and Nick. Yep, we need exactly. a Dave replacement then. We need a Dave replacement. That's There's a, no replacement for you, mate. There's no replacement. Oh, stop it. Stop it. So thanks very much, Nick. If anyone else would, would like to contribute to the show, uh, please do send in. It doesn't have to be a video. It can be an audio note or a written note. If you have any experiences of whiskies we've got coming up, if you'd like to know what whiskies we've got coming up, just ask. Uh, but that yeah. was that was really nice to hear what Nick had to say there. That was great. Thank you for that. I do like the the experience of a whiskey being like an old friend. And when you're drinking something like this, even though, as I said, I can't remember if I've had it before, but it was so familiar as soon as it touched the tongue. It was so nice and welcoming. And I think he nailed that in his review. He has. Stick around to later in the show when you can hear the Talisker 10 tasting notes from our whiskey god. Just get the things over with. This week's thing. Thing with jigs. Yes. This week's things. Everyone's favourite part, as we say every week, but we have no idea in reality. We've never done a poll. We're just going to assume. We should do a uh, poll, one of those fancy ones on Instagram, where it like, tells oh, you yeah, straight away. Yeah. What's your favourite, the whiskey or the things? It's easy, mate. I wonder if it'll be different on Twitter and Instagram. Oh, demographics. Mm. Oh, anyway. Watch this space, listeners, for that juicy <laughs> bit of content. Content. <laughs> content, I love it. Precious content. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Dave anyway. Giles... What has been keeping you awake to the middle of the night this week? Um, actually, it really was keeping me awake to the middle of the night. You know how it's been quite hot? Yeah. Well, it has been in London. I don't know about in Manchester. And the, the sun comes over my flat. And oh, yeah. as the sun is going down, it just becomes an oven and there's no f- through air. So if I want to be productive, I literally have to sit up through the night because it's just too hot during the day. Not the end of the world. It's just... Body clock issues, right? So uh, this week I've been sitting up to the middle of the night, been working on a song for the Hackney Windrush Festival, which yes. we talked about briefly last week. You did, yeah. And I finished my song, finished it earlier today, actually, and it's turned out really, really well. Oh, amazing. And, and Goma, the, the gentleman I've been writing the song with or whose story is inspired by, one, he's ridiculously cool and super inspiring. And two, he's getting really excited about all the different ways we can record it. And he's he's got someone who's going to come and play steel pans on it and all kinds of stuff. So, wow. I, this this could open up complete new doors of musical experience for me, and I'm all in favour of that. Um, also, Nick, obviously, look at, looking at my hat, I've been really enjoying all the SpaceX stuff that's been going on this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shame it didn't go up. Well, hopefully by the time the episode is aired, we'll have had a second attempt at the launch of the Demo 2. Uh, Dragon Crew Dragon capsule uh, flight uh, taking astronauts into space from American soil for the first time since 2011 in the space shuttle. Nice. It's a big deal. Do you know what? It's only the second time in our lifetime that a new vehicle has taken astronauts into space. The other one was Chinese in 2003, and I can't pronounce it, so I won't. No, don't go there. But that's, <laughs> that's pretty crazy, isn't it? You yeah. think all of our life, we're both in our mid-30s, Mid to late thirties. That's generous, yeah. And yep. <laughs> and in our lifetime, only this is only the second time a new vehicle yeah. has taken an- astronauts into space. That's crazy. That is, or people into space. Yeah, they just kind of didn't do it for a while, did they? Pulled the pulled all the funding, no, didn't they? But bear in mind, this is now the ninth cast before us. Bear in mind, they only started in nineteen early sixties. In the in the twenty years, twenty to twenty five years before that, there were seven different vehicles, and now mm. there've only been two in the last twenty five years. It's crazy. Mm. So uh, the last 35 years. I'll tell you what, I do um, love their space suits this time around. It's great, isn't it? They look great. It is great. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm enjoying all of it. I'm enjoying the access. I like the fact love it. that... Because in the old days, I'm going to talk briefly about this, but in the old days, when shuttles launched, it was before YouTube did live streams and things like that. So you didn't see anything. You might have caught something on the news. Or whatever. I'm so sorry, sorry listeners. I thought we'd be talking to Robbie Coles by now, I'm not going to lie. Hang on. Let me explain this to Robbie. He's in the Zoom green room. Hang on, hang on. Robbie! Robbie! Nick, Nick. Robbie, are you all right? Am I, am I supposed to be on the show right now? Is Dave talking about space again? Yeah, so he's gone off on one about this 
demo to space launch thing. I mean, yeah, it's interesting. I know, right? It's interesting, but this is whiskey and things. It's not whiskey in space. You know what I mean? In it. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe he should start his own podcast, like Dave in Space. Jesus. <laughs> or, or Space and Things, you know? There hang on, go. hang on, one second, one second. I'm going to see if he's finished. Hang on. It can handle humans. Uh-huh. The only way of doing that oh, is by in- putting oh, yeah. humans in it. No it's way. crazy. Interesting. These two guys, and they say goodbye to their families. Their families no, it's still going, mate. It's still going up there. I'm really sorry about Bloody this. Bloody hell. It's like he's on his own planet. Jesus. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, mate, I think he's finishing. Okay, I will talk to you in a minute. Okay? Okay. Okay, okay. bye. Bye, bye. Cool, cool, bye. cool, cool. Bye, cool. bye, 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 bye. 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 Pilots. They just look so calm. I love it. Anyway, uh, Nick, what have you been up to? Sorry, I nodded off then. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Um, yeah, shall we just nothing. get... No, nothing. Just uh, no, just <laughs> sitting around playing with myself. Oh, it sounds like fun to me. <laughs> well, it's quite hot. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's quite hard to handle. Uh, should we crack on with um, an interview? What? I'm sorry? Should we crack on... <laughs> it's quite hard. <laughs> Shall we crack on with this week's interview then? Yes. Let's <laughs> crack on with this week's interview with Mr. Robbie Coles, the legend that is. Last week we had a whiskey expert, so we thought that there was only one way of following it up, and that's by getting Robbie Coles on. Robbie's one of our old friends. I met him in 2012 on tour, uh, when I was on tour with Room 94, who Dean Lemon from episode three uh, was the drummer. And that's how I met Robbie. And we became good friends. He's toured with us, and I've toured with him a few times. Love him to bits. He's so much fun. He's been, uh, he's become a bit of a TV star recently, and he's on the Ranga Nation, which is hosted by comedian Ramesh Ranganathan. Uh, which is a pretty big deal. It's on the BBC. Yeah. And he's like there every week. He's it's, vlogger. It's great seeing he's him. He's vlogger. That ginger vlogger everyone loves. So we've uh, we've had a lot to talk to him about. So let's hear from our good friend, Robbie Coles. Hello, Robbie. Hello. Mr. Coles. What's all this about you've got a whiskey you wanna, you're drinking tonight? What are you drinking? i got one of the finest whiskeys. Yeah. Uh, High Commissioner Blended Scotch. Scotch is that it? Whiskey? Yeah, it's called Scotch. Yes, Robbie. Is it Scotch? Yeah. To be fair, I don't. I'm. I'm absolutely have no idea about whiskey. To be fair, but I am. Uh, Nor do we. Don't worry about it. How much was it? Uh, it was a fiver. Yeah, it's not going to be good. <laughs> it's not going to be great, is it? No. Yeah, you might. Want, you want to mix? I would never say this about any good Scotch, but you might want to mix it with some Coke. No. Just, just go for it, mate. Just go for it. I haven't got Coke. I'm going. I'm going bareback. Go bareback. Yeah, man. I don't trust any whiskey which has some sort of fancy, like High Commissioner. Just I'm looking at the the latest reviews on Master of Malt for High Commissioner. What are we packing? But the first the first review from the 19th of May. I'd rather have a beer. <laughs> oh my god! One star. I had a bottle for some time now and decided to give it a try. I didn't like it at all. You get a strong alcohol taste and smell, and it literally burns while it reaches your stomach. I agree it is cheaper than Rivals, but I'd rather drink beer than this whiskey. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go, you see? That's the thing, Robbie. If you're trying the wrong things, you're never going to like whiskey. So we need to get you a proper bottle. They need to get me, yeah. Next time, I have to be uh, proper stuff. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> <coughs> did, oh, God. Did you not enjoy that, Robbie? Oh, my chest is well warm. Wow. <laughs> Is this normal? Wow, my tongue's going as well. How much did you do? A little bit, but, oh, that's nice. I like it. Again, I, don't, I can't really yeah. compare it to any other whiskey, so this is, this is the top of my list. So I recommend it. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, that's great news. It's, uh, that's great. it's a five-star review for <laughs> the High go. Commissioner from, from Robbie Coles. So, Robbie, you and I have known each other now since, for eight years, eight years. Wow. When uh, when we met, when we were touring with Room 94 together. Yes. And as soon as I met you, you had your big red hair. Uh, oh, yeah. As soon as I met you, I thought, one day I'm going to set that guy's hair on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Some dreams do come true. Uh, don't well, they? yeah, we'll, maybe, maybe we'll talk about that more later. But uh, <laughs> so you, went from, you went from musician and now you're a bit of a TV star. What, what do you consider yourself to be? Do you know what? I don't really know. I was thinking about this the other day. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing, really. It's kind of like I was doing music and then I kind of stopped for a bit and then I've gone down a different path. I've ended up doing a tiny bit of TV, which has been like amazing. And um, 
I've always wanted to be like a presenter or something like that on TV. So, um, and now I'm trying to get back into music a little bit. So I don't know where I stand. I'm just, I'm just Rob Coles at the moment. You're an, you're an all round entertainer. <laughs> trying to be. Tr- yeah. Trying to be. That's my plan. Your personality, <laughs> Robbie. Hey. <laughs> Oh, cheers, Nick. How did you first get into the TV stuff? Obviously, your first thing was was first dates. Uh, no, it was actually on the Undateables. Um, That's the one. Yeah. Mm. So um, I was at work, and someone came into work, and um, they said they were just looking for some fun, energetic single males. Um, and they spoke to me, and I said, "Oh, is it that obvious that I'm <laughs> single? Brilliant." <laughs> I had that haircut at the time, so I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take any date going right now, please." And then I did that, and then I ended up doing. Um, a celebrity call centre shortly after that where I had to phone up um, a comedian or a celebrity. It was for cancer research. So I did that and that was quite fun. I just had to be on the phones. I wasn't actually getting filmed. And then um, the same company, production company that made that show was making the regulation. So they just got in touch. It was like, do you want to be on this new comedy talk show? I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And uh, yeah, second series in now. It's going well. It's going really well. Yeah, it's funny, man. I mean, I watched the last one and the part where you're trying to cut your own hair is absolutely amazing. How's it growing uh, back? Yeah. Is it, it's actually it not too bad. Yeah, it it's feeling? actually, it's kind of got a bit of a straight line here. Um, <laughs> but I think I've kind of saved it a little bit. But yeah, Jesus, I, I just didn't, I kind of knew what was going to happen. And at the same time in my head, I was like, no one wants to see a successful haircut as a video. Hang on, you know hang I mean? on a moment. Like, did, did, did you... Did they ask you to do it then, to, to do your own hair? Or was this an idea you had which you pitched to them once you'd done it? Uh, no, so basically the Ranga Nation sends out some um, little questionnaires sometimes being like, what you've been up to in the week, what are your thoughts, you know, so they can digest everything because it's such a, an open show and we talk about a lot of things. And I just was like, I bought a, a shaver for my beard and I'm tempted to maybe cut my hair as well. And then they kind of liked that idea, so they kind of like went with it. And we're like, do you want to maybe uh, cut your hair and film it? And then we might put it on the show, might not. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, why not? I'll try and cut my hair. Um, I want. I would have wanted a guarantee. Like, if I'm oh, doing this, you're putting it on the show. No, okay. uh, 100%. I remember doing it and I was like, the stress I've been through and the, like, the almost heart attack I've had, I hope this gets on bloody TV. And luckily <laughs> it did. And uh, I think a lot of people liked it, luckily. But the, um, the thing is, because you and your hair, that's an adventure, isn't it? Like, you, it's always mm. been a big part of your personality, expressing yourself through your hair. So the idea of intentionally, well, I don't know if it was intentionally, but having a bad haircut yeah, is a big deal for you. No, yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Because uh, there was one point years ago, because um, obviously it was my branding at the time, on my T-shirts, it was on my posters, it was... It was everywhere. Like, it was like I was just a hair boy. There was one point where I went to get my hair cut. Um, This is back in 2013 or 14. I actually ran away from my hairdresser because it wasn't the lady that normally cuts my hair. Like, that's how bad it was. I was, like, so protective over my hair. And now I don't really care that much in a way because maybe it's not my part of my logo or my brand, maybe. I don't know. And then, yeah, I just thought, you know, if I cut my hair, it would uh, would grow back. It would just be a bit bit of a laugh. Yeah, Bit of banter. I, I watched that video as well. It was a lot of fun. So did you really not know how to use those beard trimmers and were doing it the wrong way around on purpose? Or or are you? was it genuine you didn't know how to use them? Was I doing it the wrong way? Yes. Oh. At one point, I yeah, see, I didn't were, know yeah. what. Oh, yeah, see, I don't know. I honestly don't Have know. Have you never watched someone with clippers do your hair before? Uh, not really. I'm normally looking at myself in the mirror. But... <laughs> yeah, but they're doing your hair! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. I've not taken it in. I'm miles away. I'm just chatting about all sorts of my hairdresser. But I do. You know what? I thought that was weird, actually. Now you mention it, <laughs> that's where I went wrong. I thought because I only got it like the day before, and I tried trimming my beard, and that all went a bit tits up. And then um, obviously went for the hair next, which is a stupid idea. This is why the hairdresser gets the big bucks, Robbie. <laughs> I yeah. Know, yeah. Oh my god. Yes. I- I'm going to bring it up now, right? While we're talking about your hairdresser, what did your hairdresser say when you turned up and the back of your head was singed? Was it that bad? It was pretty it was, bad. It, it was pretty bad, yeah. Do you know what? I think I actually brushed a lot of it off because, like, it literally did fall off. Yeah. Like, I remember getting home and I was just brushing the back of my head loads and I was like, all down my back. I was like, oh, for God's sake. For the, for the uh, record, it was an accident. Before you carry on, it was an accident, right? I was playing mm-hmm. with a lighter, as you do. Robbie was sitting in front. We had a FIFA night round here. Robbie was sitting in a chair playing FIFA. 
he had a shot and missed and was like, ah, oh, threw his head back. And of course, his hair's full of hairspray, hits the lighter, and the back of his head just went. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> went off. <laughs> and straight away, I'm like, ah! smacked the back of his head. <laughs> like, and Rob, yeah. Robbie was none the wiser. His head was on fire. The first he knew about it was he got a whack on the back of the head. <laughs> I turned around, and everyone's faces was like white and panic. And I was like, what? I missed the, I missed the goal. It's fine. I don't know why everyone's so stressed. <laughs> and then it was like, I don't know who said it, but yeah. And it, no, that's it. It started to stink of hair. And I was like, <laughs> oh hair. no, Dave's hit the back of my head. And I was like, oh no. I can no. imagine. How much hairspray did you have on? Because that would have made a yeah, difference. It, yeah. I had, that could have been really dangerous. It was, yeah. yeah. It literally went, <laughs> it was so quick. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I wish I saw it. Yeah, it was like a blue glow on the back of his head. And I was just, oh, <laughs> I'd never panicked more in my life. Blue? <laughs> Was yeah. <laughs> the next time he came over, he brought a fire extinguisher with him, which I thought was very, uh, very apt. Mm. Safety first, Rob. Safety, Safety first. Absolutely. I don't blame you. Safety first. I don't blame you at all. I can't believe you nearly killed one of our guests. It was an accident. You know what's crazy, right? I rewatched episode 41 of the YouTube show Whiskey and Things, right? When we had yeah. Robbie Coles, yeah, and Sean <laughs> Lemon on the couch, even then you were jacking up a lighter and trying to light your farts. Do you remember that? It's almost like something about Robbie makes me play with lighters. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Something about Robbie being around makes you want to commit arson. <laughs> well, what is it? Is it his fiery red hair? You're like, damn. Who knows? Well, start a fire. He's just such a lovely man. It's a part, part two of that interview is coming up later. We talk about a whole load of other stuff. Anyway, Dave, let's hear from the Whiskey God. That Whiskey God has notions. Ooh. Whoa! Who is that? This Irish siren. Send her up to the Whiskey Heavens. Personal invitation. I'd like her to show me her notions in private. If you know what I mean. Oi, behave yourself, Mr. God. That's very inappropriate. Not impressed. Behave. <laughs> okay. What would your mother say? How old is the Whiskey God's mum? <laughs> Answers on the postcard. Two. Answers on the postcard, yeah. Whiskey Heaven. <laughs> Number one, Whiskey Heaven. So I think you should calm your loins and tell us about the Talisker 10 year old. Stick to what you're good at, God. Talisker 10 year, single malt, tasting notes, on the eyes, a golden medium amber, on the nose, peat, sugar, and believe it or not, antiseptic, iodine, maybe a dash of petrol, I call it gas, on the palate, you wouldn't expect that hit of sweetness from all the peatiness still lingering from the nose. A smoky and heavy mouthfeel greets you. Peppery and lengthy, there is a strong statement here. Statement? Reminds me of my first time. <laughs> Gross. Moving swiftly along. On the finish, a long, peppery smoke. Hints of that strange antiseptic aren't exactly welcome, but forgiven. Knowing that this is the youngest that this beautiful lone distillery on the Isle of Skye has to offer. After all, overall, this is a very memorable experience as a single malt. While not as robust in its peatiness as its cousins, the Ardbeg, Lagavulin, or Lafroig. Coming from the islands, you still get a very unique offering as a single malt. At this very welcome price point, this release should exist in every collection. It just may be the gateway drug to the world of Isla. Peaty, smoky, but sweet.
sweet enough to entice you. Interesting what he says there about how this is a young whiskey for Talisker, and I really like it. So yeah. it really makes me want to go and try some of their old, their, their other whiskeys. Was it? Did you say it's like the Storm and the Dark Storm? Or yeah, but I think they don't have age statements on them, so they might be a. Oh mixed, right, there might be a blend. Oh, no, they are single malts, sorry, but they. I think they might be a bit younger, um, but they oh, do wow. do some really much older ones. Um, it's a good range they've got. Worth checking out, for sure. Thank you, God, wherever you've gone. Thank you. But I like what you said about it being a gateway to the world of Isla Peaty whiskies because it does have a subtle peat, this one, you know, if you don't want to go straight for the Lafroigs, et cetera. Do you know, I think I think that is very true. I think this is a natural step up from other whiskies before you get into Lagavulin or Lafroig or somewhere like that. Territory, because yeah. It, yeah, definitely. He didn't sing this week, did he? No, no singing this week. Uh but he has been singing on our Patreon page, Nick. Oh, beauty. This week, uh, a request from Tara was for him to sing Bodies by Drowning Pool. <laughs> and he delivered. <laughs> oh, yes. He delivered. I bet it's that going, is It's been amazing. going down well. Uh, Lauren, <laughs> Lauren has commented, sweet baby Jesus, why? Crying face emoji. <laughs> oh, the crying and face. I think... Uh, yeah, uh, Amar, Amar said uh, that was great. Tara, Tara said she loved it. So that's all good. It's going down well. The Whiskey God Singing is going down well. And don't forget, if you're on our Patreon page, feel free to request a song. Uh, looks like next week he may be singing the Beatles. Nice. Yeah, so that's uh, if you want to get involved, uh, please go over to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash whiskey and things. Whiskey with no E. Whiskey God will be back with his tasting notes next week. But uh, for now, shall we hear the second part of our interview with Robbie Coles? Robbie Coles. That's a yes. The whiskey. So, Robbie, on on the Ranga Nation show, do, are you all buddies? With yes, the, we uh, are. With the rest yeah. of the panel. Yeah, we are. It's, do you um, go out for beers afterwards? Obviously not this year because we're currently in lockdown. Oh, yeah. But last year, a lot of the people from last year are actually on the show. Yeah, we'd go out quite a lot. Not too much, but some nights we would go out for a few beers and stuff. But yeah, everyone's like super friendly, super nice, especially Ramesh as well. Like he's... He's absolutely wicked. He's such a nice guy. He's just wicked. So nice. I think I think what I what I like about it, and anyone who's seen it may think that you as your vlogger character or whatever is a caricature when actually it's so you. Maybe, maybe you are hamming it up a little bit, but to me it's like that's the Robbie I know, <laughs> like from going on tour and stuff like that. You you are very random and you do come out with stuff that makes us all laugh all the time. Like sometimes intentionally, sometimes I know you don't really mean it. Like it's, you're just great fun to have around. <laughs> so, so for me, when I'm watching it, it's like, yeah, it's Robbie yeah. being Robbie. And, and, and I'm, I, I like oh, that, cheers, that, that actually it hasn't, you, you haven't had to change too much to be part of it. Um, or it doesn't feel like you have. Yeah, no. Oh, that's really nice of you. Cheers, Dave. Yeah. It's, um, I actually thought I ha- did have to change because it's quite a, like a, um, it's like a news comical show, you know, it talks about news and politics and I don't know anything about a lot of things. So I was always like, I'm not going to be smart enough or um, not know much about anything really, but that's what they love about it is because they've got people from all over the UK who don't actually know, well, they do know what they're talking about, but myself, I don't really know what I'm doing. So yeah, a lot of it is just little one-liners or just a, a random thing that's not intentionally meant to be said, but it just comes out the wrong end, which is always the best way. What is next for Robbie Coles? Have we got more music releases? Is there more TV stuff? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, there's whiskey. It's literally burning my throat off. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> let me let me quickly top it up just to get it back. I'm feeling quite pissed it, as well, Robbie? you know. What's it's, the percentage on the back? How strong uh, is on. that one? It's 40%. Yeah, that's standard. Yeah, that's, that's that the standard. Minimum. That's minimum. That's yeah. the God, minimum you guys are... allowed to be. <laughs> Wow. So yeah, what what is next for Robbie Coles? I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my music. I was kind of like a folky, pop, rocky artist. And I have been writing a lot, but I'm not sure, because it's been about three years since I've released anything. I'm adding pressure to myself, obviously. And um, I wanted to come back as, I want to come back with a banger, you know, like a, not banger, but I was something proud of, you know, and something that I'm like, yes, this is what I want to do. And I haven't released a new song with like, I know it sounds stupid, but even with my new haircut, which I've had for two years, but it's still, it's just a whole image change. I feel like I just need to rebrand myself in a way. And um, I'm just trying to figure out what path I want to go down. Do I want to keep it acoustic and lighthearted? Or I've been writing some like, some electronic-y kind of, um, kind of like 1975 
uh, Charlie Puth kind of interesting kind of vibes. But I don't know. I don't know what I want. I I, I want to keep it fun and engaging and. Because I love all my songs from all those EPs that I did, but I feel like if I bring new songs into the set, which sound so different, I might have to let those go. But that's something that I need to need to do. And change is good, but it's a bit scary. So I mean, you, I'm getting there and I'm working on it. You could always rebrand altogether and start something new, and you know, like have an Owl City kind of project. Yeah, that's I was I was toying that idea, like maybe not having Robbie Coles, maybe having something a bit like a name to myself and. Um, kind of going off off the rail in a way but uh, in a good way I suppose um, when, I, when I think of you uh, and, and if you don't want to talk about this by all means tell me to shut up but you, you've been through a lot of stuff obviously you had you, had, you were ill for a couple of years and you got yeah, yeah, through yeah. that so lyrically now you must be sitting on some darker themes which may not have been prevalent when you were writing that first EP the first EP song about girls and stuff like uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. what's the second one more or going to be more songs about girls or, or something That's like it. that wasn't yeah, it yeah. there will be a bit of a juxtaposition there so it might be a rebrand might help that in terms of how do I deal with playing She Really Effing Likes You and this song about when I thought I was going to die yeah no you're absolutely right yeah it's definitely Definitely um, a thing, yeah, because obviously yeah, going through that and um, getting the all clear and stuff, um, I kind of came out the other end and I was like, right, I'm just going to chill for a bit, not to put any stress on myself and just relax. I did actually write a song, which is called Alive. It's very like, I really fucking like you, one of my songs, and uh, I recorded it in the studio. It's back in 2017 with my friend Arthur Woolwin. I just kind of didn't release it because I just felt like it was quite rushed. I was also only like just about a, a year into being clear, and uh, I didn't want it to sound crazy but i didn't want to jinx myself releasing a song being like i'm fine woo and then you know so um but three years on i think i am ready to kind of take that dive into that um into the head of you know how i was back then and like you said writing new songs and i probably got loads of stuff that i could really dig up and get some new music out there which i love doing and what i originally started doing and how i met you guys and all my friends so um yeah it's definitely on the horizon I always think of you, Robbie. You're, you're like the one friend I have, which is truly connected to what is going on with. And, and uh, there's no way of saying this without it sound a bit weird, but d you're down with the kids. <laughs> yes. Like, I, I, I don't really know. Absolutely. I don't really know what TikTok is, but I reckon you've got an account, and I reckon you use yes, it. Yes, of course. Oh yeah, I'm I'm doing all sorts on that. Yeah. It's uh... you will have your finger on the pulse. This sounds really stupid, but even like the skateboards you have and stuff like that, you, you seem to always be rolling with it. Uh, with, <laughs> <laughs> nice, with, nicely done. With, uh, <laughs> with whatever's going on in the world. Is it intentional or is it just like, just out of luck? Or, um, or maybe you're not down with the kids. Maybe I'm making that up. I'm probably not down with the kids that much. I mean, it's just, I can you can post about it and then sit in bed and do nothing. Yeah, no, I think I just learned a lot um, through the years. But again, it's just me. I think I've always been this kind of the person that I am and yeah I, I don't I don't really know that's, uh, that's really caught me off guard you saying that it's really nasty cheers Dave <laughs> oh god this whiskey Jesus second glass in <laughs> woo I love you Dave too many whiskeys <laughs> well you know you know as well I think I just learned a lot from just being around people and just engaging and learning all the time and put myself in situations and you know when I went on tour with you guys uh, in 2014 that was kind of like my first tour as a solo artist you know without the room 94 boys as well so i was really on my own so um and that was absolutely probably my favorite tour you know it was such a good time and i think i even learned a lot on that tour as well and i actually watched the um i watched the uh my tour vlog from it two days ago i think we're like two or three days in and i'm filming and it's just you come up to the camera and you go oh cough robbie <laughs> and then <laughs> in my head i was like you know what this is this is it I, I love this this is fantastic and then the next clip i'm in leeds and i'm vlogging and i'm like hi nick and nick's like piss off robbie and i'm like this is <laughs> this is this is love so on me. this is love nice. <laughs> no you are you guys are great but no it's watching it back i was like just thumbs up that tour it's just so much banter so much love and again i didn't know many people on there but you guys knew me feel so welcome on that tour and again taught me so much my favorite d day on that tour was robbie's birthday oh god Ro robbie had gone out the night before he woke up with a hangover with with from nick with nick and danny danny from episode five uh the least listened to podcast <laughs> um and uh <laughs> it's it in. Uh, absolutely that's danny gruff the least listen to an episode of the podcast <laughs> the three of you woke up hanging and the rest of us had decided 
that uh, we weren't going to acknowledge your birthday. Treat him even worse than we would normally do in like being being a bit like, oh, Robbie, like, just because you went out last night. Like, <laughs> It doesn't don't mean you can slap. Yeah, don't, don't slap. Oh, up. And, then, and then the tire. Do you remember the tire blew as well? Oh yeah, my god! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Robbie got. Like, I, think, to action, I think we blame Robbie the blame for, for that. that. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then, of course, after sound checks, we presented him with a cake and his present, and it was all all, all right. Oh, it's so good that. That was a big moment. That was so funny, though. Yeah, ev- literally. How long was the the the, uh, the journey? Maybe three hours, I think. Maybe longer. It was Leeds to Cardiff, so probably four hours. It was quite a long time, and. Uh, Every half an hour, it was like, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. And everyone would clap and cheer, and I'll just be sat there like, okay, I should be next on the list, surely. <laughs> maybe, they're, maybe, maybe they're doing it by age. They've done Bill Gates, they've done someone else. Oh, I must be coming. <laughs> oh, guys, news in. It's also whoever's birthday it is. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to blow this tyre. And it was me, okay? Here we go, hands up. I did it, all right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I slashed the tyre before we left power. the service station. That was good, good times. times. Was it was great tour. The very good times. Great tour. Yeah, really good tour. Great yeah. tour. It was a great tour. 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 Yeah, God, messy. It's great tour. <laughs> great tour. Such a good tour. Yeah, great. Great tour. Yeah. Great tour. Great tour. Such a good tour. Great tour. Good tour. Great tour. 2014 was a good year, wasn't it? Good year. Robbie, we'd love to have you, like, when we're back out and do stuff, we'd love to have you do a proper whiskey tasting with you because I think it would be a lot of fun having you there trying different whiskies because I think your reaction nice would would be amazing. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. That'd be an absolute yeah, honour. The ultimate whiskey noob. That'd be <laughs> amazing. And you can be a proper judge of it too because oh, yeah. you'd not be all snooty about it. Be like, no, that's horrible. What are you talking about? Because personally, this this whiskey I'm having right now, five pound high commissioner, is probably the best whiskey out there. But <laughs> hey ho! <laughs> but I'm 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 open to try new things. Okay, I'm open. All right. That's, that's good to know. Throw me some suggestions. I'll, I'll I'll give it a go. But high commissioner, absolutely. You're listening to the Whiskey and Things podcast. Good tour. Great tour. Great tour. Such a good tour. That's a great tour. I remember being smashed at the show in Cardiff on his birthday. That's all I remember from that one. Really? I remember having a great show, but I was very drunk. <laughs> oh, oh, that was, that was good, good times. times. Yeah. But that was good to speak to the High Commissioner Ambassador, Mr. Robbie Coles there. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more tales from that tour. Good tour. We spoke a lot about, great tour. A little about it a lot more. Such a great tour. In the full length interview, which is available on our Patreon page. Go and have a look. And if you want to find out more about Robbie Coles, he's on all the different social media platforms. Uh, he is on Twitter and Instagram at Robbie Coles. And he's on Facebook at Official Robbie Coles. Ooh. He's on YouTube at Robbie is Acoustic. And he's on TikTok at TikTok Robbie Coles. Oh, my God. I don't really know what TikTok is. And I thought it was irrelevant. hard for us just to lose an E out of ours. And he's got a million <laughs> Exactly. Names. I do find it funny when people put official on their, on their tags. I just find that really funny. I know what you mean. That when someone starts their career, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, he's my mate, so I can slag him off a bit. But, you know, he starts his career well, as a nobody and puts official <laughs> Robbie Cole. Mate, there's, no doubt, like, there's I, no doubt, though. There's no doubt. No, but I, I mean, I get it. If you're an old band and a social media starts and someone gets in and steals the Beatles, so yeah. they have to go in and put official the Beatles yeah. or the Beatles official. But Robbie Coles, official Robbie Coles. Anyway, so thanks for coming on the show, Robbie. That was a, a lot of fun. And hopefully uh, we will get to try some other whiskies with him back when all this is over and we can be in the same room as people. I want to check out his TikTok, to be honest. I'm not on TikTok. I'm Even 49 mine. years old. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Nick, remember when uh, I talked to you like, a couple of weeks ago, I said you had a review. I think it was when we were talking about to Jared and someone left a review on iTunes or sorry, Apple Podcasts and their username was PBSNTO and we didn't know who that was. Yeah, I remember. Well, I got an email this week. I remember. Yeah. Uh, his name's Pete. Hey, Pete. His name's Pete Barham. Barham? Yeah. I, I don't Barham. know if I'm saying that right, but it's, it's Barham. Pete Barham. Hey, Pete Barham. Uh, he says, hi, uh, left you that review that you read out in episode nine. My full profile on the platform is PB Santiago. It obviously got shortened. The Santiago nickname is one I've carried for some years from the War Games community I'm part of. 
I won't bore you with the details. Thank you, Peter. Uh, <laughs> great pod, and I'm currently tasting Penderet Myth, the Welsh whiskey. Uh, cheers, Pete. So, oh, thanks for getting in contact, Pete. Thank you yeah, for thanks, clarifying dude. your name because we didn't know. And thanks for uh, thanks for checking out the podcast. We hope you enjoyed episode nine, uh, the photography special. I'm sure there'll be more photographers and more photography specials. And uh, I'm sure at one point we'll get round to doing some Pendarin as well. I think I've got a bottle of Pendarin in my collection. Yes, so, uh, you do. It's about time we do a Welsh one. For sure. Well, Welsh, we've done English, we've done Scottish, we've done Irish. Yeah, we are going to be moving around the globe a bit soon. So we. Oh, are we? Mm. Why? What have we got planned next week, Nick? Next week? Well, yeah. we're going back to Kentucky next week. But uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. still moving around the globe a bit. It is, you know, but, you know, it's still, uh, it's, a, it's a bourbon. We've done bourbons before. This is um, the Michter's US number one Kentucky straight bourbon. I've never had it. I'd never heard of it before. It came in our little sample box. So I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, uh, it's a 45.7. It's another one that's got a bit of a kick to it. It's good colour. Nice. Looking forward to that. Nice. Well, look forward to that too. Yeah. Uh, and um, I don't know I don't know if we've got a guest planned yet, do we? No. Oh, well, uh, it'll be a surprise for us. Be a surprise for so, you. There you go. There you go. It's fine to view you, Dave. You know? That could happen. <laughs> it might have to happen. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you to anyone who has sent in comments. Uh, massive thank you to Nick Barnes for your little... Oh, your 15-minute video nice reviewing Talisker. Massively appreciate that. Don't forget, if you've got anything you'd like to contribute, please do. Just get in contact. Yeah. All the usual ways. And uh, love this whiskey. Yeah. Love Robbie Coles. Love, love Robbie Coles. Coles. Just uh, happy days. Happy days. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy each other safely. We'll see you next week. And responsibly. Episode 11. Smashed it. Feel free to cut all that space stuff if you <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll trim it up.